All right, it's time to do some Ubers on our Unthink Assassin. We are level 90. Other gear we are going to be going with is Kingslayer. G-Face. No socket in this. I'm not sure if I want to waste a socket quest on this thing, since I'm not sure if I'll be using it in any sort of end game setup that I'll be going for. Might be specking traps. Uh, I'm using the Angelic combo for attack rating. Got the best Raven Frost here that I have managed to find using the Enigma, so I can separate the bosses easier from the Thrash minions. Uh, double up Goblin Toes. Drax gloves for the life tap, Rachnid mesh just so I can uh, teleport a little bit faster. And I really, really wanted to use a storm shield in this slot, but uh, I just couldn't make my resistances work with that one. So I'm sticking to Sanctuary. So the deal here is that we're only getting 8% DR from our Enigma, and that's kind of on the low side for the kicks. It makes me very nervous. So I'm quite worried on how I'll be able to sustain myself since the kicks aren't dealing that much damage and uh, the life that might not actually be enough against uh, hard hitting bosses like Lilith and Durio. So what I did is I opted to go for some block. I didn't want to go all the way up to 75 since that would have been an insane dexterity investment. I don't usually like going for blocking with the kicks in at all, but I figured I would actually need it this time to sustain myself. I hit the 42 FCR breakpoint and uh, if I swap my ring to this FCR ring we'll be hitting 65, which should give us uh, nice smooth teleport frames. And the inventory is basically a whole bunch of lifers and resistance charms even some attack rating stuff. Basically all the best charms I have managed to find while doing LK and other areas. This one is actually quite nice. Uh, the Merc gear is quite specific. We are using Fortitude. Not that we actually need the damage from it, it's mainly for the resistances. I'm using Andy Helm to boost out the poison resistance just so he won't get insta-killed by the poison that uh, Lilith is doing. And we are using Kelpies now. From what I can remember this is actually very very helpful for a kicks in when doing Ubers. Oh and the fire resistance is actually nice. Helps counteract the resistance penalty that you get from Andarials. I also made sure that I have some uh, combat shrines available for me help me with the most difficult fights in the ubers. One over here and the other was a travinkel I believe. Yes. So I can grab those before I go after the harder bosses. I'll also buck the mercenary. Come on. So he won't get targeted by the bosses. Let's see if we manage to do it. All right. Blink to us. Is he getting targeted? Looks like no. Yep. Okay, it works now. All right, then the rest of this video will just be voiceover. While I'm opening the portals, I realized that I actually forgot to talk about what I have on swap. I'm using my OP66 CTA that I made on the video I made earlier. And then I'm using a 35 FCR Spirit just to boost up the paddle orders and uh, help me teleport a little faster. I switched my ID tone to Tomo Town Portal just in case I happen to need it. I know that I definitely won't be needing the identify. I'm keeping my teleports here nice and short, just because I wanna play it a little safe. This is the first torch run I'm going for and I really wanted to get that first torch so that it would help me out on the future runs that I'll be doing. I don't wanna risk landing on top of a huge group of enemies with like might, aura and extra fast and stuff like that. So I'd rather do shorter teleports and play it safe. Duriel is usually pretty easy to separate from the trash monsters that you have around. As he moves so fast, it's basically pretty easy to lure him over to the red portal. And there you know that you can fight him without any of the ads being present. Ah. 
I kinda like the Holy Freeze Mercenary when doing this. Gives this teleporting phase a little bit of extra safety. Make sure that the monsters aren't hitting you quite as fast, even if you do happen to land on top of them. Which is very likely in this kind of area, by the way, where you can't necessarily see where you are headed. I do the same sort of thing with Lilith as I did with Duriel. I try to lure him next to the red portal so that uh, I have easier access to her later on. Here she just wasn't cooperating at all, she'd like to stay behind these pillars over here. Go and pick up one of those combat shrines now. I also do the enchant buff from a demon limb that I have managed to find. I'm not sure if the damage bonus that the combat shrines give you actually works with the kicks. I don't think it does, but the combat shrines do give you a huge bonus to your attack rating, which is very helpful. Oh, and I also forgot my FCR ring on for the fight. There I switch it back to the angelic ring so I get more attack rating. You can see that the mercenary isn't targeted by Lilith at all. If he was, he would basically instantly die. Kelp is there, really helps kick in out against her. If you didn't have the slow on her, she would be constantly putting you into either block frames or hit recovery and interrupting your attacks. I was really hoping for the combat shrine to last me all the way through both Lilith and Duriel, but the Lilith fight wasn't going all that smoothly, so I unfortunately ran out of it. It's worthy of noting that Durio is actually a little bit buck and pluggy. If you have any monsters next to him, your mercenary or your minions won't actually be attacking Durio at all. So that's yet one more reason to kind of lure him next to this red portal. Once again you can see the slow from the kelp is now kind of working its magic. Otherwise, Duriel would be hitting me way faster than he is. One advantage to doing this with a Kixin compared to a budget smiter, for example, is that the Kixin can actually clear the area a little bit better thanks to Death Sentry.
compared to Duriel and Lilith, Israel is basically a joke. A lot of the slow effects on this game work on him, so you can basically stack a whole bunch of slowing effects and make it far less likely that you'll die to him. Here I see that Bale and Mephisto have basically spawned right next to one another. I try to get Bale to teleport on top of me and get away from Mephisto. I run into Diablo and I manage to lure him into the small hut over here. I want to play it a little bit safe and lure Bale even further away from Mephisto so I don't have to deal with both of them at once. I got quite good RNG in this fight. Bale didn't do any of the cloning moves that he usually does. remember that I have one extra combat shrine available to me, so I decided to go for that for taking on Diablo. I don't think I really need it, but I thought I might as well. Nothing too interesting really going on with the Diablo fight, it's basically just playing crushing blow and open wounds on him. From Mephisto I actually go quickly back to town and I swap my charms around just to stack a little bit more lightning resistance. Another thing you could do against him is switch to fade but that would possibly mean that you have to deal with a slower attack speed breakpoint which is perfectly fine and it's ultimately less time consuming than this but this time I happen to have a good set of lightning resist charms so I decide to do it this way. I don't manage to keep my mercenary alive against him. He basically got wrecked by the charged bolts. The Merc usually tends to die during this fight, almost no matter what gear you happen to put on him. The torch turns out to be a pretty okay druid torch. I'm of course after an assassin one, given that I don't actually play any other classes on this account. So looks like we'll be doing some more Ubers in the future. I realized that I forgot to talk about the skills. I maxed Dragon Talon. I got rank 9 burst to speed. This should be enough to give me 3 frame kicks even under Duriel's Holy Freeze. And otherwise it'll cap out my attack speed of course with Kingslayer. Uh, I got Cloak of Shadows and Mind Blast, just in case I would need them. 
turns out I didn't 20 points in the Venom. Maxing out Venom ain't actually necessary, but I didn't know what else to do with my skill points, so I decided to max it. I put 12 points into Fire Blast to get Death Sentry some extra shots, and then I maxed Lightning Sentry and Death Sentry. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it interesting, you can give it a thumbs up.